In the championship, chapter nine, entitled, The First R, seven, eight. Leon's mood hit eight and a half by the end of science. I've made a decision, he informed Lily Matisse and P.W. as soon as they'd left the lab. About, said P.W., about Pumpkinhead. Which one, Lily Matisse asked, the human or the doll? It's an action figure, not a doll, P.W. grumbled. Whatever, Lily Matisse snapped. Guys, Leon interjected, focus. I'm talking about both pumpkin heads. That's a relief, said P.W., I got worried that you might have bailed on the whole project. I almost did, Leon admitted. So what's changed your mind? Lily Matisse asked. Leon stuck out his tongue. Einstein, said P.W. Yup, and sparks. I figure if accidents, mistakes, and failures lead to discovery, we're pretty much set. P.W. grinned. So what's the plan? Not here, said Leon. Let's go over the details at my place, if that's okay with you guys. He didn't have to ask twice. Both Lily Matisse and P.W. loved Leon's hotel and its menagerie of guests. Better get my mom to call your parents, said Lily Matisse. Once permissions were secured, the three fifth graders dashed down the school steps and piled into the yellow cab parked at the end of the block. It pleased Napoleon to see Leon with his two best friends. He tried to ask his usual question, but Leon cut him off. 8.5 and rising. Leon refused to discuss specifics in the taxi. Lily Matisse and PW both knew why. Napoleon might overhear, and that would violate the cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye, spit pledge the three had sworn soon after Leon discovered his special powers. The conversation in the cab focused on science and on the bald, bearded, ponytailed, green sneakered teacher who taught it. Leon said, Mr. Sparks may be out there, and he may be a little bit clumsy, but I think he rocks. Me too, said Lily Matisse. No argument from me, said P.W. And man, oh man, was it sweet watching him shut Lumpkin down with that crack about nimble students. Not as sweet as it will be when we shut Lumpkin down, Leon said with renewed confidence. A few minutes later, Napoleon pulled up to the hotel and released his passengers. Before the cab drove off, Leon asked if P.W. and Lily Matisse could be picked up around five. Bien sûr, Napoleon confirmed with a silver-toothed smile. That means sure thing, Leon explained. The three thanked the driver and pushed through the revolving door twice. Holy moly, P.W. exclaimed as soon as he'd set foot inside the lobby. The air was filled with dense smoke and an odd, steady buzzing. What's going on, asked Lily Matisse, waving a hand in front of her eyes. What's going on, the class said. Don't worry, Mr. Mayock says. I know exactly what's happening, and that's totally fine. No idea, Leon replied. He led his friends to the reception desk, where Emma Zeisel was looking unusually flustered. Mom, said Leon. It's those bumbling beekeepers, she complained. One of them, is, one of them dropped a hive in the coffee shop. Lily Matisse and P.W. cracked up. Leon rolled his eyes. What's with the smoke, Miss C? P.W. asked. Emma Zeisel pointed to a man wearing a bright white jumpsuit and a wire mesh helmet. You see the little tin pot that the beekeeper is holding? That's a smoker. It's supposed to calm the bees, honey. Anyone get stung, Mom? Not yet, but just to be safe, you three should make a beeline to the elevator. What about the VIP signboard, Leon asked. Emma Zeisel checked a list behind the reception desk. You can change the board later, she said. The International Ferret Festival won't be arriving until tomorrow afternoon. Lily Matisse and P.W. did what they were told and headed for the elevator. Okay, fess up, P.W. said as soon as they were safely inside. How are we shutting Lumpkin down? 
Have you guys ever heard of the three R's? Leon asked as he jabbed a button marked B. Duh, said Lily Matisse, writing, reading, and arithmetic. Not those three R's, Leon teased. OK, I'll bite, said PW. Which ones are you talking about? Glad you asked, said Leon as the elevator doors opened. I'm talking about rescue, repair, and reanimation. I like what I'm hearing, said PW. Lily Matisse received the news more tentatively. Rescue what, she demanded. Repair what? You'll see, said Leon. He guided his friends through the basement to a door marked housekeeping. We've got to pick up some stuff before we hit the garbage room. And we're going to the garbage room. Why? Lily Matisse asked nervously. To perform, perform the first R, said Leon. What exactly are, exactly are we supposed to be rescuing, said Lily Matisse. What's she supposed to be rescuing? Where is she? Uh, pumpkin. pumpkin head. What's pumpkin head doing in the garbage room, she asked. I tossed him. Why? Lily Matisse, PW cut in sharply. Stop giving Leon the third degree. It's OK, said Leon. I do have to explain the situation. Leon thought about how to explain this to his friends. And he thought some more. And some more. Leon said, everything's under control. There's nothing to worry about. I do have to explain the situation. Remember how Lumpkin attacked me after school yesterday? Well, when I fell, I landed on the spit bottle. It got smashed. Everything got all goopy and torn up. I was so bummed, I tossed the mess away. Everything, said Lily Matisse. Even the pouch? Even the pouch, Leon confessed. But I made that pouch for your 10th birthday, Lily Matisse said solemnly. I know, said Leon, and I feel bad about that. But we'll get it back, I promise. Leon opened the door to housekeeping. OK, let's see. He looked around the cluttered room. We'll need a broomstick, a pair of rubber gloves, and a plastic bag. The first two items were easy enough to locate, but the bags proved tougher to find. Hold on, said Leon. He walked over to a trash can, tugged off the black plastic can liner, and reached inside for a fresh bag. How'd you know there'd be a spare, asked PW. Old housekeeping trick, said Leon. Maria always stashes extras inside the cans. Is that everything, PW asked impatiently. Don't rush me, said Leon. We'll also need Maria's sewing basket. Better write her a note, Lily Matisse advised. Good idea, said Leon. What should I say we're using the stuff for? How about telling her it's for a science project, PW suggested. Perfect, said Leon. And actually, that is what we're doing. He scribbled a note. Hola, Maria. We borrowed some stuff for a science project, <coughs> which will return later. Leonito. You're not returning the science project, Lily Matisse quibbled. You're returning the stuff. That note's confusing. Hey, can we keep things moving here? said PW. The note's fine. Just one more thing and we'll be all set, said Leon. He scrounged up a big jug from a closet of cleaning products. When you live in a hotel with an all pets welcome policy, this stuff is a must. Lily Matisse looked at the label and grimaced. Poop be gone? Maria calls it her miracle potion, Leon said as he led his friends down a narrow corridor. The garbage room was dark and hot. A network of water pipes crisscrossed the ceiling. Wire fencing cut the space in half, and it was the caged off half that contained a dozen or so wheeled dumpsters and a singularly nasty looking machine that had a thick metal pole rising up from the middle. What is that, PW asked. The trash masher, said Leon. Oh, great, Lily Matisse said miserably. I bet my pouch has been crushed like a pancake. Not a chance, Leon reassured her. The trash masher is directly below the reception desk that makes such a huge racket, and makes such a huge racket that we only smush things on Sunday nights when no one's in the lobby. 
P.W. yanked down on a heavy padlock that secured the cage. Hey, Leon, did you bring the key for this thing? It's locked? Affirmative, said P.W. Darn, I'll have to find Maria. Be right back. Hold on, said Lily Matisse. Quick as a whip, she bent her knees, sprang into the air, and grabbed hold of an overhead water pipe. Watch and learn, she said, dangling off the ground. She swung her legs up and around the pipe and slithered through the narrow gap at the top of the cage. Nice move, said Leon as she dropped down on the far side. Lily Matisse blushed. Gymnastics camp, she said. Leon shoved the rubber gloves and the broomstick through the fencing. You'll probably want these. Could be nasty in there. Which dumpster's the stuff in? Lily Matisse asked. No idea, said Leon. Super, said Lily Matisse as she snapped on the gloves. I'm going to have to eeny, meeny, miny my way through garbage. No, you won't, said P.W. If Leon dumped pumpkin head last night, it makes sense to check the dumpster underneath the garbage chute first. He's right, said Leon. Lily Matisse peered into the bin positioned underneath the mouth of the chute. Empty, she announced. Check the one next to it, P.W. called out. Lily Matisse followed his advice. Nope, she said, just recycled stuff, newspapers and cardboard. She moved on. Yuck, she cried, what a stink. Our guests tend to have a lot of accidents, Leon told her. It's not a poopy smell, she observed. It's more fishy. Really? Leon said excitedly. I tossed some clam-flavored potato chips a few hours before I got rid of pumpkin head in the pouch. Lily Matisse probed the dumpster with the broomstick. I see it, she called out. A careful, carefully aimed poke harpooned the soiled pouch. Pumpkin head, however, proved elusive. I can't find him, she said. Then what are you waiting for, P.W. shouted. Dive in. Are you nuts, cried Lily Matisse. He's right, said Leon. It's the only way. Reluctantly, Lily Matisse took a running jump and vaulted into the dumpster. When she resurfaced, she was clutching pumpkin head in her rubber gloved hand. Way to go, Leon yelled. Not bad, P.W. allowed. Lily Matisse hopped out of the dumpster and returned with the rescued items. She peeled off the gloves and pushed them through the fencing, then passed back the broomstick and the pouch. But once again, pumpkin head caused headaches. He won't fit through, said Lily Matisse. The holes are too small. We can see that, said P.W. Toss him over the top, Leon suggested. After a couple of tries, Pumpkinhead cleared the fencing and landed on the cement floor with a plop. He looks like a dead jellyfish, said P.W. Leon placed Pumpkinhead on end the pouch inside the plastic bag snatched from housekeeping. Is that it, said Lily Matisse. Can I come back over? That's a Roger, said P.W. Lily Matisse jumped up, grabbed hold of the water pipe, and shinnied back to freedom. As soon as she dropped down, she let Leon and P.W. have it. I got slime all over my brand new sneakers. Stop your belly aching, said P.W. Look on the positive side. We've just completed the first of the three R's. And don't worry about your sneakers, Leon quickly added. We'll clean them up upstairs.